Hey everyone, Fearfire here. I'm going to be doing a quick um, patch notes summary and review for you guys. This is the Graves patch, point one two seven in uh, preseason season two. Um, I'll be doing an in-depth champion review and guide about Graves, so look forward to that. I plan on playing him a lot. He'll probably be my new main AD after Corky. So um, I'll I already have some plans and uh, some ideas on how to build him and stuff. So look forward to that guide. It'll be good. Anyway. Onto Corky, his Gatling gun got changed. It's basically getting buffed early game. It has a higher base damage now, and it scales with bonus attack damage instead of regular attack damage, so it'll still carry over into the late game, and it's now 4 seconds at all levels instead of scaling um, from lower to higher. So, um, I think this is good. It's a slight buff in my mind because it's keeping his late game where it is, but buffing his early game. Um, Corky should be seen more often than he is. He's pretty strong. Mana Moon, Triforce, just a lot of burst damage, which is something you wouldn't expect from an AD. And he has an escape mechanism, a debuff with his armor debuff. Um, it's a shame that his Q doesn't blind anymore. It used to have a, like a 35% chance to blind, or a 35 chance. It would blind them, and, but it wouldn't be a total blind. They'd have like, whatever. It would give them a 35% chance to miss. Anyway, that allowed him to duel. Now he can't do that as well, but he can still do so much damage and lots of burst damage. He's still really competitive. Um, that nerf just made people stop playing him, which, whatever, more for me, I guess. Anyway, Gangplank is getting a slight nerf, which is putting him right where he needs to be, in my mind. His raise morale, movement speed is being reduced by 6 at max level, which is hardly anything. Um, his attack damage on it is being reduced by 6 again at max level, which is more psychological than real, but uh, he, was, he was still a little too good, in my mind. Um, he wasn't balanced. He was a little OP. He was still being first picked and stuff like that. Um, picked very often in high elo and competitive play. Um, six attack damage might not sound like much, but when you're critting for like 250% or more, like with an infinity edge, it's going to be around 15 less damage. Still not much, but it could be the difference between whether or not someone lives. Still, this is just going to put him right where he needs to be. He was a little OP. This is this is enough to put him where he needs to be. Conway getting a pretty significant nerf, even though it doesn't look like it. Reducing Bio Arcane Barrage's duration from 10 seconds to now 8 seconds. So 2 seconds might not sound like much, but Kog'Maw builds attack speed, so 2 seconds of that attacking is like 4 or 5 attacks that he's not going to get at that increased range with that percentile damage. So a uh, pretty big nerf to him, which is fine. He was a bit OP, but not extremely OP. Not too many people realized it either, but he was still very powerful. His late game was just insane. Um, anyway, this is exactly how you would fix it, so good job, right? Um, I think we'll be fine. Oriana's base attack range increased by 25. It was 500 before, which is pretty s small, so, alright, fine. Increase it by 25. That's good. Um, Riven's broken wings, it was just changed the way that it interacts with minions and the way it functions with, like, the code, I guess. The attack command. It now counts as an attack command when you use it to lock onto a target. Yeah. Anyway, um, it also has a slightly extended duration of collision ignoring with minions, so you won't, like, run into minions right after you use it. Anyway, Shaco's health per level increased, and his base health and mana were increased, so this will make his early game a bit stronger, which is good, because his, it was kind of hard to jungle him early game. This isn't a significant buff, but it, it, it'll be noticeable. It's an extra hit or two you'll be able to take from minions. So, fine. It's good. Shaco needs a slight early game buff. He's definitely pretty powerful right now. Um, he's difficult, so I don't think we'll be seeing him too much, but he's he's not underpowered. So, anyway, Skarner, I've been seeing some good Skarners lately. Good Riffins also, by the way. Anyway, I've been seeing some good Skarners lately. This is um, before the patch. Anyway, so after the patch, I expect to see a lot more Skarners. I think he's going to be a competitive pick now. Attack speed being increased by 0.9% per level. Um, he has... I I'm not going to say anything more about that, actually before I check my facts. Anyway, Energize will no longer activate when attacking towers, okay? Crystal slash mana cross cost is decreased to 15% at all ranks instead of going up to 30. So it um, it's decreased to 50, 15%, which is half of what it used to be at max level, which is great because this was his staple ability and before it seemed like you'd have to choose between jungling or ganking because if you went to jungle you wouldn't have enough mana to gank. This will solve that problem. So, Skarner, a very competitive pick now, in my mind. Um, he was better than people gave him credit for. Anyway, 
Now he's really good. Fracture will heal Skarner even if it kills the target before it would like mark them and then if Skarner attacked them or used an ability on them again it would consume the mark and heal them. Now if it just straight up kills them he will still get healed. And the duration on his ultimate increased by a quarter of a second. Uh, might not sound like much but considering the fact that it's a suppression and that you can move them a quarter of a second is uh, noticeable. Pretty significant. Just uh, but not huge. Anyway, Talon uh, good. He needs a bit of a nerf. People are figuring out how to play him and abuse him, especially in a high elo. Um, base mana regeneration reduced and base health regeneration reduced. Or I said those backwards. Anyway, health mana regeneration reduced and ma health mana regeneration. Anyway, his stuff was reduced. Um, he had a bit too much sustain, I guess. That he was really powerful in the lane. He was able to harass well. He was able to farm well using his rake ability. And um, this will kind of put his laning in check without actually touching the damage on his ability. So he won't fall off late game or anything like that. Which is the type of nurse that they should be doing to people that have um, uh, that seem overpowered in one aspect of the game but not another. Anyway, we'll talk about Dominion here. The ambient experience gain has been lowered by 10%. So the passive experience that you would get is now going to be 10% less. You didn't get too much, so lowering it by 10%, I mean, if you take like 10% of 100, yeah, that's 10. If you take 10% of like 50, that's only 5, so it wasn't too much before. Um, I don't know why I just explained that to you guys, but anyway, um, it wasn't too much. Lowering it by 10% isn't going to be too much. 10%, yeah. Anyway, um, I think it'll just help make the late game arrive slower, but Honestly, the type of characters that were overpowered and still probably are, like Sin Zhao, AD, Scion, Trindamir, kind of, Akali, Jax, um, and they're all like AD or hybrid. Um, the problem was that you get items so fast, not necessarily experience. AP people, I feel, are underpowered in Dominion, so this is going to nerf APs more than ADs, as APs need the levels more than ADs do. So I would have reduced gold gain by like 10%, but we'll see how it actually pans out. It, you can't really tell how this is going to affect the game just by this these words here, so we'll have to see. Lowered the point where Nexus health will only be affected by capture points um, and not by champion kills or neutralizes to 100 health from 125 health, so it'll just help the game end faster. Health packs give 20% more mana and personal score was reworked. It will, um, it will reward defensive um, play and pushing and stuff like that, so... Um, It'll just more accurately accurately reflect how well you contributed to your team, but whatever. Not too many people even care about personal score. So items tier the goddess Archangel Seth and Mana Moon will now display their current bonus mana again. Um, they used to, and then it was randomly removed. It like randomly disappeared in a patch. I don't remember. I think it was last patch. Anyway, um, it'll be back again, which is good. That's how it should be. Hextech Gunblade was nerfed quite a bit. The attack damage reduced by 20. Ability power reduced by 5. Life steal reduced by 5%, spell vamp reduced by 5%, and spell vamp is now unique. I think that's a bit of overkill, but I think it's also okay. It was a very efficient item. This is uh, nerfing it too much, but uh, the types of characters that it was on, like Jackson, Akali, and Katarina, for instance. Well, Katarina isn't like overpowered in my mind. Stopped easy by CC. Anyway, um, Akali and Jax were somewhat overpowered and this item contributed a lot to it so by nerfing it a bit more than it needs to be um, some of that is kind of spilling over into um, Jack's and Akali's playstyle and competitiveness so uh, it should help put Jax and Akali a bit more where they need to be especially on Dominion where they were just overpowered so again we'll just have to see sorry I can't really determine how much this is going to affect the game but I mean, yeah, Hexite Gunblade, it's not, it's, this is overkill in my mind. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying it, I'd try to find a different way to build them. So, yeah, there's not too much to talk about, um, because, honestly, not too much was changed. Gangplank is now right where he needs to be, Kogma will, uh, see how that pans out, I think he's right where he should be. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Skarner is going to be the main thing to focus on, and Talon a bit, I guess, but, Skarner, um, I think will be a competitive pick now. People are already figuring out how to play and build him, and this is just going to make him even easier to build and play, I guess. So, yeah, watch out for Skarner. Um, and then Talon. Um, yeah, Talon's 
even getting first picked first banned and pe when people are just constantly being first picked first banned you need to nerf them a bit and it, his laning was actually quite good took people a bit to realize how strong his laning could be when built right so this is uh this is perfect and we'll see um if other areas of his gameplay need to be nerfed also in the future anyway I've said this before, I'll say it one more time. If you want to get the patch notes a bit early, you can go to the announcements form. They post them there a bit before they make it to their home page. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you watched my last one, I said I thought Cassidyn would be overpowered after that patch. And, excuse me, I think he is overpowered right now. People just don't realize it. So, pro tip, use Cassidyn in ranked. Get your rating up. He is very strong mid um, he has silence, he reduces magic damage, he has escape mechanisms, AoE slows lots of damage. Anyway, um, great harass sustainability with his mana regen when he attacks. 90 extra magic damage when he presses W on his auto attacks, which is something. Anyway, he's very strong. If you paid attention to IEM, um, he was picked uh, five times, I think, and all five times the team that picked him won. Which, yeah, it could happen by chance, but he's definitely a competitive pick. And not too many people are realizing it, but we're starting to see him get banned every now and then. Anyway, cast it in. Good. Use him. And, uh, yeah, this isn't about cast it in. Though. This is about the Graves patch. And I am done. Some cool skins in this decor, by the way, if you're into buying skins. Um, especially the Blitzcrank one. I like that. Incognito Blitzcrank. Definitely not Blitzcrank is the official name. He, like, dresses up as, uh, solid. Anyway, um, puts on a disguise. So, th it's the Halloween skins and stuff. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the videos and look forward to the Graves uh, in-depth champion guide and review. Um, first impressions type of thing. Alright, so thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the videos. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.